Alrighty guys, just Sunstrider here and welcome back to Sunstrider's Guide to Coyotes Mech Warrior 5 Mission Type, say that 10 times fast, and part 2 which will be the first mission we're going to be covering which is Attack and Defend, which is arguably the hardest mission type in the entire mission pack, not only to talk about but also to play. I've been trying to get myself back up to speed with the uh, missions by doing some instant action testing and okay, yeah, high difficulty attack and defend is no joke. Anyway, let's get started here. An attack and defend may seem simple on paper, but as I just alluded to, it's very complex in practice. And ever since up to 1.6, attack and defend can now spawn two bases instead of one. It's only a 45% chance, but it's still a possibility. The current single base variant was complex in and of itself, many different random events, this update adds to it. In a good way, of course, variety is good. So currently there are two variants, a single base attack and defend, and then a dual base attack and defend. This is of course enemy bases, not allied bases. So we're going to be starting out with the single base attack and defend, which is what was originally part of 1.0 or whenever DLC 2 came out. Single base attack and defend phase one. Where are we starting? So this may seem like a simple variant with only a one-on-one -on -one scenario pretty much. Base-wise, that is. But it's balanced with a variety of encounters. But there are some ground rules that are constant no matter what mission seeds you get. First of all is fortress turrets. The, 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 this is a nickname I came up with myself for these things. And they're pretty much specialized turrets that are supposed to be a form of heavy defense for the bases. They have more HP and scarier weapon loadouts compared to the basic flimsy paper mache turrets you normally fight. These include Ravager turrets and Shredder turrets with quad PPCs and quad AC-10s respectively. Also, bases... Ba both bases have a set number of small lances that are programmed to attack the enemy base. Allies have up to four of these, and the enemy has, well, a lot. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Artillery. Both bases have a small percent chance to spawn with active artillery, making the mission either easier or harder, depending on how bad your RNG is. Princess Champions, the highest tier of base game AI. Each base will have one of these defenders alongside some weaker defenders, and they are programmed to never leave the base. And Repair Base, the allied base spawn with four repair bays that you can use at no cost, however it only repairs armor and refills ammo, structure damage, or destroyed components or weapon systems will not be destroyed. So in terms of actually starting the game up, and once you start, uh, you know, playing as time goes on, there are random events that can take place. Hostile reinforcements, up to two enemy leopard dropships will drop an enemy lance right, on, right in front of the allied base you'll get audio and visual warnings before they drop. And I say up to two because sometimes you get one, sometimes you get two. Depends on what seeds you get. A hostile Union dropship has a very small percent chance to attack the allied base. It will deploy a lance of mechs and have active turrets. It'll stay there for like a minute or two and then lift off again. You will also get a visual and audio warning for this as well. Witcher and Mercs, this is this is arguably, for me personally, one of the scariest uh, encounters that can happen, second only to the hostile Union dropship. And pretty much, the enemy base hires a Merc unit of their own using cus costume. Nice but pick a moment there. Advanced AI. These are difficult enemies programmed to hunt your lance down. There are also VTOLs and tank swarms that spawn from the enemy base to launch a massive swarm of either VTOL or tanks at the allied base out of desperation. And lastly, there are independent pirates that can spawn and join the battle, presumably to attempt to steal some salvage. They can aggro on either base and, and attack both you and your enemies. So in terms of strategies, there are a few strategies that I've come up with and thought of throughout the course of me playing, and the first one is the defend strategy. This involves waiting the battle out, staying near the allied base until the enemy exhausts all the resources. The pros of this is that it's the easy way, easiest way to ensure the safety of the friendly base. If anything attacks the allied base, you got your full lance, plus any defenders that spawn at the friendly base. That should be more than enough to defeat it. 
If you're lucky, pirates or friendly artillery will spawn and do most of the work for you, and you're in close proximity to the repair bays in case your lance gets damaged during the defense. The cons is that this takes the longest to complete because Coyote told me that it takes about 40 minutes to deplete all of their available strike teams. Here I thought it was only like three enemy strike teams. Boy, was I mistaken. If enemy artillery spawns, you'll bomb your lines to oblivion unless you risk a mech to destroy it. And the artillery spawn, enemy artillery spawns behind the enemy base. So you actually have to run over there and destroy it if you don't want it to harass you. There could still be high threat level defenders alive at the enemy base even after the dust has settled. Because you only get four allied strike teams so they may not be enough to destroy the friendly base or destroy all of its defenders either. And of course it's the most boring strategy since you're just standing at the friendly base for, you know, 40 plus minutes. And a lot of new players don't want to do that. They're used to the fast paced combat of the vanilla missions. Hell, even some veteran players may not want to stand there for 40 minutes. But it's still a strategy that you can do if you're willing to wait that long. I'm not saying you have to do it, I'm just saying it's there. The second one is my personal favorite, which is the Flea Maneuver. It's named the Flea Maneuver because the Flea 19 from the yet another blank mod collection being mech lab, mechs, clan weapons, and inner sphere weapons. But it could be done with any fast mech, rock, and machine guns. That involves leaving your lance at the allied base and performing hit and run maneuvers on the enemy base. It only risks one mech and one pilot being yourself, saving, possibly saving on the repair bill. Bring it on! Machine guns deal bonus damage to structures, making quick work of the enemy base. Possibly the quickest way of beating the mission, since you're in a lightning fast mech, gunning down the base with machine guns. Cons, you are only in a light slash medium mech, depending on what's your fancy. Meaning you gotta stay mobile, keep an eye on your mini map to avoid the uh, enemy mech defenders. And of course, you have to be comfortable with using lighter mechs on top of it. You are also trusting the safety of the allied base entirely to the AI, which we all know is mediocre at best. And you might have to retreat once or twice to repair this so refit, depending on how much ammo you have and how much damage you take. Random strike of when it, random events, spawns, and strike teams could be grown on you since you're doing most of the damage to the objective. Like I said, this is my personal favorite. However, fair warning, it doesn't really work in higher difficulties. I speak from experience. I tried doing it in instant action. Especially if you're like me and you're running the yet another blink mod collection because an atlas with a long tom will fucking one-tap you. I no fucking joke. It happened to me once before when I tried to do it this already. <laughs> which is why I'm redoing it now. Which is why... Anyway, moving on to the Divide and Conquer strategy, which involves ordering one or two of your lance mates to stay at the Allied base as the rest of you advance with the Allied strike teams. This is the best balance between defending and attacking. Allied artillery can still do most of the work for you if you're lucky. However, it leaves the Allied base slightly more vulnerable than on the previous strategies. Enemy marks or pirate lances can catch you out in the open, leading to a nasty brawl in the middle of the map. Some battlefield awareness is required, and you have to make judgment calls when working with the Allied Strike Team because they won't wait for you. They are programmed to spawn and go. Right? They don't listen to your orders like your lance mates do. And you gotta play play close attention as to what spawns and when. Slow so heavy assault mechs may not make the best candidates for the attack as they can get caught out in the open. And like I said, the strike teams don't wait for you. Right? You gotta move with them. And another pro because I recently talked to Coyote about this. This is actually Coyote's preferred strategy. This is what he tells most people to do when they bug him on the Nexus about how to beat this mission. You use the strike teams to your advantage, so there you go. Mod maker approved. So there you go. Alright, moving on to the dual attack and defend variant. The majority of the rules have stayed, but a lot of them have shifted. The defenders will be split between the two bases, potentially making it easier to attack one base at a time. The two enemy bases will be weaker than the single base. Artillery will be completely disabled. Fortress turrets will still spawn. The map will be larger to fit more bases. And of course, the allied base will still have its repair base. When it comes to the random events, enemies will no longer be able to launch their direct attacks at the Allied base via dropship. Strike team, pirate, VTOL, and tank swarm sizes are unchanged. A friendly union, a friendly union dropship can spawn, which is the exact opposite of the enemy union dropship we explained earlier. 
and it's specifically designed for this dual mission type, dual base attack and defend. All right, friendly Union dropships only spawn on the dual attack and defend. Hostile Union dropships only spawn on the single attack and defend. In terms of strategies, you have the divide and conquer, or divide their forces tactic. Sorry. This involves watching the Allied strike teams to see which base they attack and taking your lines to the opposite base at the same time. Since the enemy defenders are split, it'll be easier to defeat them. Attacking both bases at once will speed up the mission, especially since both bases are a little bit lower on their HP values. The cons that the Allied base will only have a few defenders, you could leave a, uh, a mech or two there from your lance, but that will also weaken your attack on the opposite base. You will not have any AI support, and by that I mean you won't have any of your employer's mechs, meaning your lance will take all the damage and you'll have to pay for it. Even if you take the time at the end of the base to repair each individual mech, if you haven't used all four repair base by the end of the mission, you, you still, if any structure damage occurs, the repair base won't fix that for you. Next is the all eggs in one basket approach, which is very similar to the... 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 divide and conquer strategy from this one. Pretty much involves you following the Allied Strike Team, similar to the Divide and Conquer strategy in the single base variant. AI support means the base will go down faster, or they will keep the defenses entertained. If you're lucky, a friendly Union or Pirates will attack the other enemy base. Of course, this leaves the Allied base vulnerable, and the same level of battlefield awareness applies as in the single base variant. You could also use the Flea Maneuver in the dual base attack and defend variant, but you might not have enough repair base to stay stocked on ammo to destroy both yourself, and again, it will not work as well in higher difficulties. I speak from experience. Don't go on a difficulty 100 attack and defend expecting you to survive in a little flea. <laughs> I fucking learned that the hard way. The defend strategy can still work against both bases, but it'll take even longer since there are two bases to worry about now. Some closing thoughts before we get into instant action portion of this video. Attacking either base on your own is extremely ill-advised given the amount of high threat defenders. Even if you don't follow the strategies to the letter, you know, I'm all for finding your own way and I hate backseating just as much as the next streamer. But still, a little bit of patience goes a long way. And as a small bug report here, sometimes Max will spawn with the wrong paint job or pilot voice packs. That's just cosmetic area errors. It does not affect the AI behavior. So that being said, that's it for the talking portion of this video. Let's head into instant action and do the next part, the actual physical playing of the mission, shall we? Alright, so starting off our attack and defend instant action demonstration. As you can see, we are on a difficulty 16, relatively low difficulty here, starting out. We have a Hunchback 4G, UAC-20, and four medium lasers. Uh, Urban Mech R68M with four SRM4 streams in double heat sinks, XL engine, and steel. We have a Florentine Crab with dual medium rifle and dual large laser. And a Flea R5K with quad medium lasers and dual SRM2 Infernos. And this is the squad we are going to be rolling out, and we are going to be performing the defense strategy. So this is going to take a while, yes, but we are going to be waiting out the enemy defenders for as long as we can reasonably maintain to, until I lose my patience and attack the enemy base. <laughs> we are also playing on the mushroom biome, thanks to... Vaughn Biomes. So yeah, we have our uh, Princess Champion Defender. It looks like to be a Griffin. For some weird reason, tanks will turn to love the spawn at the very back corner of the map, which delays the strike teams. We have our friendly Ravager turret up there. Quad PPCs, I believe. Should be quad PPCs at least. 
also have a friendly tank, the repair bays, the artillery that doesn't always activate, mind you, and the enemy bases on the opposite side of the map. So what we're going to do is park our fancy asses right here, open up our map, and wait for the enemies to come to us. And this is one this is a modded biome. Link to my link to my active mod list will be in the description below if you guys want to uh play the way I'm playing. Have a Ravager turret up there, our flea and all that. So yeah, this is obviously the most boring strategy here. It's not very entertaining to watch for you guys probably, and it's not very entertaining for a lot of people to play. But as I said earlier in this video, it is the easiest way to guarantee the defense of your base. And as you can see, there is a capture shulko here, so we're pretty much doing a reverse beachhead. I think I forgot to mention this during the first bit of this video when I was just blabbling. Alright, we have our first enemy strike team coming in. It's an enemy griffin. You can see the rappers are trying going ham there. Eat my AC-20. Looks like we have an enemy dropship inbound to the base as well. Gonna have to keep an eye out for that. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, you hit them hard when they do that. Glad that was never fixed. <laughs> Always at least some very entertaining situations. The Vulcan there getting stuck on the terrain. We also have a another Vulcan coming up on us. Alright, Vulcan bailed out. Well, Vulcan 1 bailed out. And Vulcan 2 is out of here. Alright, we are going to stay near the circle, though. We're going to stay near the capture circle. Looks like all my allies are aggroed on stuff still. On you, Commander. Come on, get back here. Let the uh let the employers max a deal with that. A few seconds till the first enemy dropship lands. We'll see what they drop. How's everybody doing? Crab's untouched, Flea is untouched, Herbie is slightly damaged. Alright, the enemy dropship should be landing somewhere. So, somewhere. Oh, actually, they're landing all the way down there. Interesting. Must be a. Uh, must be an issue with the uh, map then, because normally the dropship is supposed to land somewhere like around here, but I guess that's an issue with the map. That's what happens when you uh, mod your game to oblivion. Looks like we have a crab here. Anybody guess this paint job, by the way? Don't slap my crab. God, that guy got fucked. Oh, another enemy crab. Hello. Alright, what I'm going to do is tell everybody to stay here and I'll go give myself a quick repair. 
as well as a uh, refill as well on my ammo. My hunchy quick power up. Actually, a little not great yourself. All right, I'll swap over to the crab. Tell everybody to hold still, and I'll go get this thing repaired. Repositioning complete. What the fuck is up with that? What the? F That's weird. That that still works, so as long as my hunchback still works. Looks like the friendly strike team is currently engaged. However, we will maintain our position as defenders of the base. Surprised of that uh as far as that griffin pulled up so much. How's the rest of the lands? Urban Mech is still a little dinged on his sh on his side torso and the flea is still untouched. Alright. Uh, he's back up into the circle here. Alright, so the griffin is returning. Because like I said, he is programmed to stay near the base for as long as possible. But he may get aggroed by stuff a little bit away like he is right now. See how they'll go a little bit away from the uh, base that they're assigned to. But they won't stay out there. As soon as they disengage, they'll, they'll come back. At least based on my experience. Gane just could slap me in the face and he could walk all the way over to the enemy base right now. <laughs> Which I think that's what he's doing. You know, looks like something really pissed him off. He has that, uh... That point's being thrown out the window, huh? I really should have got to this sooner because now Coyote's back making constant updates and in a week this video is going to be like completely like not important anymore it's going to be out of date put some crap like that But hey, I'm not here to be perfect. I'm just here to give you guys working strategies that you can build off yourself and uh, evolve as the mod evolves. You know, my... My, uh... My advice for you guys, for at least this strategy, for those of you watching, just, uh, you know, activate 2x speed, you know, just 
put on double speed until something happens. <laughs> you know? Because this is, uh... This is boring. Not gonna lie. This is more... Ten minutes in. Well, it looks like we have a second enemy dropship heading to the base. You got the Mech Warrior 2 Betty telling you of that. Every time I say or hear the word Betty, I just think of Glitchtail. <laughs> and that's what being neck deep in the Undertale Alternate Universe community does to you. I swear to God, if one of those mechs drops down and it's holding a pink scythe, and I'm out. I'm gone. I'll see you later. <laughs> I don't want to get slapped in the face. With, I don't want to get slapped in the face by no ratophobia, alright? I have enough problems, and Betty ain't one of them. I have enough problems. And the benefit of staying here is that you can easily react to these dropships coming in. Because all you gotta do is wait for the thing to spawn on the radar. Or just, you know, spawn within your line of sight. And then you move to intercept. You don't have to trek halfway across the map just to respond to this. Oh, poor hunchback out there. All alone. Probably that guy's gonna get fucked. Alright. A little bit of a stutter there as the thing spawns. And there it is, spawning in the same spot as last time. Looks like that griffin finally woke up down there. God, this UHC-20 kicks ass. You said it was supposed to crit. That ain't critting, goddammit. You lied to me. Woo, shit, that one's gonna crit. Watch. Okay, no, it's not good. Once more, my Matt got a little bit torn up. So I need to go repair it again. Before something else runs at us. That guy got screwed up. Flee! Oh. oh god, immediate leg. 
disintegrate. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that poor bastard didn't stand a chance. He does not know the true mastery of the Flea 19. So that hunchback is still trying to figure out what the fuck he's doing with his life down there. I see you over there, lurking. Lurking in the distance. Ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. No, I'm kidding. Looks like the Irby's a little damaged. Eh. We only have... Oh, hey! Independent Pirates! Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the party. So, if we're lucky, those guys will aggro on the enemy base and completely decimate the enemy defenders for us. I could speed up this mission a little bit. Apparently they're House Merrick people, too. Where the fuck did House Merrick come from? Well, I'm pretty sure I picked Comstar as the enemy faction. Just barely make him out out there. Just barely see the the toothpick in action. Appears those guys are fighting something over there. Probably fighting the uh, next strike team. Target has been slapped. <laughs> Would you rather fight a bunch of kindergartners? I want to fight some kindergartners. You see, that wasn't the whole quest. Those kids are getting slapped. <laughs> uh, uh, comic dubs. Never, never change. That hunchback just died already? Yeesh. You have one laser left, man. Just give up. You have no armor left. You... Okay, there he goes. Bam. So we should be getting another spawn in at some point. Hmm. So it looks like the pirates are sticking to the enemy side of the map. Oh, yeah, it sounds like they're engaging with the enemy defenders at the moment. We should have gotten another uh, strike team at already. I wonder why they haven't spawned. Yeah, they're doing damage to the enemy base. Free World's League is fucking that base up, it looks like. Well, kind of. Ah, there's the next friendly strike team. There you are. So they will be uh, moving on now. Looks like we have a dual AC2 Urban Mech, a ECM Phoenix Hawk, and then a little tank, and a couple little tanks. This 
kind of kind of funny watching the uh, AI like this. Like a bunch of little chess pieces moving around. It's like watching a professional uh, chess game or something. I have no idea what that one guy's doing who's standing uh, at the bottom left of the map there. He's all alone. Completely disengaged with the rest of the fight right now. Maybe he's an LRM bucket. And he's uh, lobbing stuff over, over the ravine at the enemy base. Oh no! The pirates, no! But the Free Worlds League! Meanwhile, the the Merc unit you hired as just as their you know feet kicked up at the friendly base, <laughs> watching the battle unfold on a fucking tack monitor. <laughs> but hey, being a Merc is not all about fighting. Sometimes you get stuck with the boring job, like defending the garrison, as the employer does all the dirty work. So there's only one pirate mech left, and he's currently going buck wild in the enemy base right now. Kind of tempted to take my flea over there, see what's going on. But that's uh, that, that's a uh, opportunity for another another strategy. I am going to be doing the flea maneuver at least once during this video. I see the FLE R5K at the top left of the screen there, where it shows all your mess, mechs, shows your lance, and I swear to god, that <laughs> when I first noticed that, I thought it said Frisk. It's like, ah, too much Undertale! Ah, too much! <laughs> That's what being neck deep in the general Undertale community does to you. <laughs> It's F-L-E, not F-R-I, but the final R-5-K makes it look like it's- Hey, what the f- What, did I just hear something fly past me? What? I swear to God, I thought I heard it like a AC shell go whizzing by my face. Getting paranoid or something. Would you two do something down there? What the fuck are you two doing? No, down there. What are you doing? You know, they're brawling with a mech, that's what they're doing. Meanwhile, the one pirate dude is doing more of the work than us! Kinda funny how that works out sometimes.
using this downtime while I can in a little bit here. I'm zooming in as if it'll make the map bigger. Damn, that one pirate almost destroyed 50% of the base by him freaking by his freaking self. <laughs> he must be rocking machine guns or something like that if he's doing that much damage. Giant cannon blocking this side view here. The friendly mechs are moving in a little bit more. Urban mech is being bullied by what looks to be a locust. Poor guy. An urban mech is fucking the resilient though. Look at them. He's he, he's fucking splashing the damage pretty good over there, isn't he? He's out of weapons now, yeah, he probably bailed. Now, what is that Phoenix Hog doing? It looks like he's trying to uh, find a path to the... Oh, hey, by the way, the uh, last pirate was destroyed, finally. Already 30 minutes, wow. Enemy should be close to exhausting their uh, strike teams at least. We're almost at the 40 minute mark. Nope, oh, another uh, strike team. What the fucking Christ. Another strike team spawned, by the way. Ooh, this one spawned as Prince's Champions, right. Coyote said that the last two things all spawn as Prince's Champions. 
And it's all four mechs, too. Well, it's four mechs, not all four mechs. You know, well, you know what I mean. They should be able to do some damage now. Hopefully. Damn, one of them uh, just fucking beelined it for the uh, enemy base. Down to sixty percent now. It looks like they uh, looks like they all got a straight path to the uh, base now, enemy base. We used to cut up pretty abruptly there, didn't it? And yeah, these guys are Princess Champions, so they're, um, they're doing quite well, actually. You can see that that building's pretty much stripped of all its uh, all its outer layers. It's like an onion. It's being peeled like an onion. That <laughs> poor Irby being left behind. LB ten X AC solid slug. Isn't that just an AC ten with extra steps? Like, what's the difference between a solid slug and an AC-10? <laughs> I'm sure some mech warrior, f mech warrior lore nuts are about to go ham in the comments on me. Yeah, there he goes. Now the urban mech has joined the fray. Twenty-six percent left on the base. They're doing work. Fifteen percent. Nine 
percent. Come on, guys, you're almost there. I believe in you. I believe. Good job, guys. All right. Our job here is done. Let's get the fuck out of here and get paid. You're a little late there, patrol, not gonna lie. Well, now they're just gonna get absolutely obliterated by the leopard guns. Alright. GG, everybody. And there you have it. 38 minutes to complete the defense strategy. Obviously, it's a bit of a drag, and there's a lot of downtime. But it's completely possible to just let the AI do all the work for you. Hit this shit like it's a Wibbles mission and just let the game play itself. Of course, we did a little bit of fighting in the uh, beginning portion of the mission, but our Lance never left the base tile. So, it's completely doable. And that being said, we are going to move on to the next... to the next strategy. So, I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, guys. Welcome to, I guess, part two of the instant action mode here. I don't know what to call this, but uh, we are going to be doing a difficulty 22 attack and defense. Slightly higher than the last one. I'm only doing slightly higher because uh, I've been trying to record this second mission for the flea maneuver for a while. But I've learned that the higher difficulty you go, the less viable this uh, thing becomes. Because, uh, turns out that, uh, that, uh, higher difficulties with only a light mech charging the enemy base alone isn't that viable, apparently. <laughs> so, unless you're really good at light mechs, don't do this above difficulty like 20, I want to say. Because that's when you start to get into, like, enemy assault mech territory, and that's when there's a lot of fortress turrets and stuff. So you can still do the flea maneuver, but I suggest you mix in a little bit of uh, following the strike teams in so they can tank most of the uh, damage from all the defenders and then go from there. But uh, we're hopefully finally going to be able to beat this. As you can see, I got the flea 19 with clan heavy machine guns. Excel engine and some uh, end clan endo armor. We got a Centurion with a couple of MRM 10s and an LB 10 XAC. An Enforcer with an LB 10 XAC and an ER large laser. And then a Blackjack with a couple of EC2s and a bunch of ER medium lasers as our Lance. Alright, second game of the day. We are playing Termaline Desert and we're playing Incursion and it looks like we got a dual base dual base variant, so each base is going to be slightly easier to destroy than a single enemy base. And sometimes when you first load into the game you'll see a friendly turret or the strike team get a little bit caught up back there. Because uh, every time there's going to be like one enemy spawning way in the back here. And uh, according to Coyote, it's something that he can't really fix because it's just kind of. 
You know, it's just like the way the spawning uh, is handled. All right, so it's just it's, it's something he can't control at the end of the day, which is fine, you know. You can't have perfect control over the game, right? As much as you'd want to. Some things are just unmodable. At the end of the day. I'm trying to find a uh, spot that I can jump down here. There we go. Hopefully avoiding leg damage here. Alright, leg damage is a lot more forgiving in MechWarrior 5 than in MechWarrior Online. You go, down, you go down the slightest cliff and you just take all the leg damage. You can fucking throw yourself off of shit in this game. Yeah, patrol, that's slightly concerning. Especially if it spawns a mech. If it spawns a mech, it might just be GG, to be honest. You need every point of armor you can get, and this isn't Mech Warrior Online, so you can't. Ah, oh, fuck, it's a medium mech. Uh, that could just be a part of the strike team, though. Oh, no. Ah, crud. Alright, time to fall back. We can't fight that alone. Oh, missiles, please. If any of my components get ripped open, especially with my legs, it's GG, and you might as well reload. Because you need that leg armor. You need that leg structure, or else you're pretty much an assault mech walking at like 40 kph or less. Something like that. In case you couldn't tell, I've been attempting this for a while because uh, the later difficulty you go in, the. More, the more you gotta pay attention, I guess, you know, the harder the flea maneuver gets. Which is to be expected, I guess. So this has been taking me a wee bit. And then again, I'm not the most avid light mech player, especially Mech Warrior 5. I've been slowly getting used to it in Mech Warrior Online, but these are two very different games. Well, not very different games, but the time to kill is very different. Let's go ahead and repair. And a lot about this mission type is, of course, knowing when to retreat. Because if you're facing down two medium mechs and a light mech, you're not going to win. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You are simply just not going to win that, and you should probably fall back while you have the chance before one of your components gets popped. Because the main thing about doing the flea maneuver is that tanks having a bit of issues is to keep as much armor as you can on the trip there. So if you activate a patrol, you're probably better off falling back to the base and luring them to there. Luring them to the what? Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Time to go waste another uh, repair bay. I can't lose any of my machine guns because that's like the main, that's like how I, <laughs> that's like the whole, you know, reason why we're here, right? Ah, oh, that fucking medium, get out of here. Go ahead and use up another repair bay here, because I definitely don't want to lose any machine guns. Right, so I'm actually going to go this way, since that medium X coming from that way. Jeez, man! 
Ah, crap, there's a meeting mechanism from that way, too. Alright, 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 alright. That's probably an XL build, isn't it? Boy, there's a light mech here, too. What light mech is that? Commando, alright. Into the back of the Centurion. There goes my other arm. That cicada got killed? Nope, there it is. Not even a cicada. God, there's two uh, mediums there. Okay, that's the cicada. Shred that, shred that cicada. I'm gonna go for legs on the enforcer here. There he goes, and now we have to use up yet another repair bay. Because once again, we do not want to lose our weapon systems. System offline. Looks like the uh, friendlies are doing a number on one of the bases, which is very nice for us. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to maybe try to go for this base. Yeah, there are those who are about to get destroyed, though. What? Okay, alright. Looks like we're going to be using the final repair bay before we go. Fucking Vulcan with its burst fire ACs. Alright, good job. Probably gonna go against my better judgment and just go. We only have one uh, one left. We probably shouldn't waste it as we have the others. And another thing about Mech Warrior Five, you gotta think about is you know, since we're all fighting against AI here, and the uh, it's all aggro based. Right. If you're the first mech they see, they're all going to aggro on you until they start taking damage from something else. Where in uh, something like Mech Warrior Online, they're uh, they're they're not based off of they're not reliant on programming and they're you know real players and all that stuff who can uh, dynamically target stuff as need be. Right. SRM turned on that bugging me. I didn't even kill it. Awesome. Go. Whoa. Don't want those missiles bullying me. Oh boy. That's a medium mech over there. That's the Irby. Oh, I thought I got leg there. I was about to wonder how I got legged. I think I have an enemy strike team just spawned. Don't want to destroy too much of the walls because that's also uh, providing a bit of protection for me. Uh oh. Oh no, my CT shit. Shit, I gotta go. I gotta flee. <laughs> I gotta make like a flee, huh? No! No! I can't stay here. Not with my CT popped. 
That'd be a death sentence. Gotta go get repairs and come back for another attack. And it looks like a strike team just spawned there, so we might want to wait those guys out too. Gonna kill all the turns so they don't backstab me. An actual ramp. Oh, I really hope none of those max aggro on me. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, come on. Let me through. Let me through. Let me through. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Which is just when you need them. Not on this mech. How's our fortress turn doing? He's a little beat up, but not bad. You also have to remember, this is an XL build, so uh, you gotta be careful with that as well. Alright, I am going to stay in the back, because uh, things, <laughs> things aren't looking too, too good here. See if anybody comes up. Those two are still. Looks like the uh, friendlies are going to uh, destroy that one, uh, that one base for us. Oh, here comes one of them. Woohoo! All right, go get them. Go get them. Gonna let my allies take aggro before I go in myself. Oh, here comes the uh, here out comes that uh, friendly turret, eh? All right, he's pretty much toast. Let's go for him. Regrouping on commander's grid request. All right, good job, good job. Ooh, hello. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to open up the map. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go make another move on that uh, enemy base. One more strike should definitely do it. Should I go take out that base though? Maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I can go help help him take out that base, and then uh, the future strike teams can go for the uh, da already damaged base. Uh oh. Uh oh. Coordinating air attack. Definitely going against that guy. Don't think that Vulcan's gonna be living that much longer. Man, where'd that crab go? Whoa, I'm getting shot at. I don't like that. Man, those crabs are so tanky. Target 
Alright, friendly strike team. I'm gonna go see where those uh, friendly mechs are going. Moving as a unit, Commander. Before I make my move. Enemy base is pretty much dead. Maybe I should just choose now. Looking forward to seeing another enemy strike team at that enemy base, though. Reach the waypoint, awaiting orders. See, look at that. Not even any freaking fall damage from that. It's crazy. That requested location, Commander. Quite a few defenders here. One more good strike should do it, though. I'm slowed. Ack. Man, those missiles. Alright, alright, this base is toast. Let's get out of here before we get killed. No, 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 please. Please, come on, man. I just want to beat this. Serpentine. Okay, that one hurt. Alright, I think we're out of the range now. Oh man, that was a bit of a nail biter. Not gonna lie. I think we're just going to uh, make another rush for the second enemy base and uh, do our best to take them out. What did you lose anyway? Eh, you only lost a hand and you almost lost a leg. I'm more worried about that leg, you know? That fucking patrol might be the end of us, actually. Bunch of aircraft, definitely going to uh, camp at the base here. Definitely going to want to camp these guys out at the base here. It's not a patrol I can fight alone. Alright, thank you, PPC Ravager Current. Contact! Battle mech! I beg your pardon? Ah, it's just that light mech. Target, locust. Little locust. That guy's getting fucking murdered. Ah! 
not really. There we go. Yeah, strike team's kind of getting stuck in the center of the map. Midnight where I'm at. Another thing to uh, be worried and somewhat annoyed about is that uh, the enemies are programmed to miss you, but they are programmed to uh, hit you just as much, so it's kind of annoying when they get that perfect laser burn, even if you torso twist, the laser like almost follows you, so you can't really spread the damage that reliably, because they're programmed to get that perfect laser burn every now and again. Which is kind of scary if you're running a uh, an XL build like me. This is not the base. I was about to be happy, but nope. I was about to start going buck wild here, but uh, not here, not yet. There you go. That definitely looks like more like a base at two percent HP. They do have an urban mech here and a very wounded mech, but I can just take out like a little piece of wall here. All right, there you go. Let's get the hell out of here before these guys kill me. Get that little uh, notification from Betty that you've destroyed the base, and now you can get out of here. And there you go, that is attack and defend using the flea maneuver. As you can tell, it's definitely not the easiest thing to do. And it only gets worse the higher difficulty you go. I definitely wouldn't recommend this for a difficulty 100 attack and defend, especially if you're using yet another mech lab. Because yet another mech lab introduces uh, more mech variants. So you get like an atlas with an arrow four launcher and a long tom. That just one shots the flea. I tried doing that in a uh, difficulty 100 of the fully maneuver. It just got one shot, so <laughs> yeah, definitely not great. But we will be going into the higher difficulty mission versions in just a moment. All right, guys, we are going into a difficulty 51 attack and defend now. We got ourselves a clan a pult, a clan SRM pult, catapult BB with a bunch of clan SRM 6s and a couple of clan heavy lasers. We got a champion with an LB10XAC and a few medium lasers and an SRM 6 Artemis. Got a Florentine crab with a couple of AC5 burst fires and a couple of medium pulse lasers. And finally, a kind of bog standard Jaeger mech with some double heat sinks, double AC5, double AC2 burst fire, and then some medium lasers. So let's waste no time and jump into it. Alright, so here we are. We get another dual base attack and defend. Interesting. But uh, something I've learned in my last couple of attempts at doing this difficulty tier is that uh whoops fuck uh all right well that the first couple of attempts that i've learned is that the uh 
The friendly strike team only knows how to go to one base. Right, so they're programmed to go from point A to point B. If you go to the same base that they're going to, and you destroy it, they won't go to the second en enemy base, which I guess is a limitation to the AI. So you're better off probably just going to the opposite enemy base that they're going to. Right. So they seem to be going to that one. I'm going to do a greedy play, and I'm going to take my entire lance to this side. It's because I want all four of us there. I'm going to go in an all-in greedy play. Because there's a lot of stuff over there. And I'm actually going to swap over to the Jaeger Mac for that uh, long-range stuff so I can snipe out those, uh, those enemy turrets. Because I should be able to snipe the, uh... Oh, shit! Oh, shit! That's my center torso gone already. Gonna go for legs on this Wolverine. Oh boy. Oh, there's a freaking another assault mech behind us. Ammo low. low. Looks like I'm gonna have to go back to base. Why isn't the catapult attacking? I'm just glad I didn't lose any weapon systems. We're on the move. Tell you guys to chill there for a minute.
the waypoint, awaiting orders. System offline. Oh wow, you almost got a cord. Champion almost got court too. That was a brutal brawl. Probably not the best engagement, but I really wanted to try how uh, viable this uh, greedy push would be. But uh, this was an actual campaign. This already is looking like a pretty nasty uh, repair bill. Let's go make another push. Hopefully they don't send another nasty mech after us. Or a group of mechs. How are those guys doing? They're almost at the uh, second enemy base. I don't even think we got close to this one. I mean, I really like the Agramek and the Rifleman, but they're just so squishy. They're definitely like one of the squishiest mechs in the game, I think. And here I do, and here I am mostly running around in like a flea or something in uh, my career mode run. Definitely gonna want to snipe out those uh, fortress turns before he make a move on the base. Target destroyed. Target is down. the extended range of the uh, ballistics to our advantage here. Enemy destroyed. I assume I'm doing damage to that thing. I hope I am. Biggest thing is I don't want to be first in the sensor range. I definitely want to take the Ravager out first. It's still standing. Ah, no! Is it gone? Alright, it's gone. Now let's do the uh, Shredder turn as everybody brawls with that thing. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's looking at me. It wants to fire at me, but it can't. Is it gone? Alright, it's out of here. It's a lot of firepower off the board now. Go ahead and get some early damage on the base, too. Yeah, me and the crab have the same idea. Everybody on the Centurion. Let's get that AC-20 out of here. Absolutely shredding these fucking fucking buildings. Oh no, we were almost out of AC two burst fire ammo. And now we are out of it. Well, hot damn. Alright, this base is toast. Let's head back to friendly base so I can get a restock. Definitely a long walk back. I do like the Jaeger mech because it looks like it's bombing its head and jamming to the music. This thing is just fucking bobbing and vibing to the music because it's like, <laughs> it looks like it's got a fucking bop going. It's got a beat going. But of course it's super squishy. So it's probably vibing to the sounds of its own uh, guns being destroyed. So that's probably fun. Uh oh, that's not something I want to see. Commander's target received. Oh God, I need to not have aggro anymore. I'll have all them uh, tango with that motherfucker. He's almost gone. Alright, form back up on me. Crab just took that critical explosion to the face. Oh, nice. We have a uh, friendly uh, doohickey mobob.
looks like that charger has uh, looked up to its name and has charged the enemy base position. Negative. No access route. Invalid target received, Commander. Oops. Group rendezvous acknowledged. There. Gotta restock on ammo before we make a move and assist the friendlies in destroying the second base. And that's why I split up, like I said at the beginning. The, uh, the strike teams are apparently only programmed to go to one base. And they're not very dynamic. They can't... They can't uh, switch after one's destroyed, which is a bit of a shame, but... Uh, you can only mob the AI so much, and there's only so much you can do, so... I'm definitely not a mod creator, I'm just a, uh, I'm just a tester and a player, so. Move order complete. Holding location. System offline. Not requested, Commander. Right, got as much armor as we can back. Now let's go. Uh, now let's get going. So yeah, I guess uh, each strike team picks a base and goes to it, and they can't uh, dynamically change it on the fly. So I think if a new strike team spawns when one base is destroyed, they might choose the uh, other base. But uh, if a strike team is already there and you destroy the base, then uh, you can't uh, you can't change it. Oh well, what can you do? Besides just fucking vibe to some tunes with a Jaeger Mac bobbin. Got that Jaeger Mac bob. <laughs> I remember when I was still playing with Pyrotech before DLC 2 came out, because uh, Pyrotech also added racks as well, and uh, I had a Jaeger mech with like quad rack 2s, and it was only quad rack 2s, because you need enough space to uh, have ammo for it as well, right? And I gave it to an AI because racks don't do nearly as much damage per bullet for projectiles or other weapons so they don't get aggro a lot. So they kind of stood in the sidelines stripping down enemy armor as uh, the rest of the lance brawled. It was a pretty good setup and I'm wondering if I can recreate that in uh, yeah, another Mech Labs version of it. But there you have it! There's the all eggs in one basket approach, or I think it's the split. I think it's the split their forces approach. Actually, now that I think about it, <laughs> where you go one side, friendly AI goes to the other side, and uh, you just blitz both bases. Definitely can lead to some uh, heftier repair builds, as you saw. But I mean, hey, it worked. The initial fight is really what determines it, really. Because that's when the enemy has the most mechs on the field, is when you first spawn in. Because they got all those defenders at the base, plus the strike team that just spawned. you dealing with all that at once. Can get pretty crazy, and we almost fucking lost our side torso there and all that, so... High risk, high reward, I want to say. As you can see, all of these exposed structure points would be quite the uh, repair bill. But, that went pretty well though, all things considered. So now we just have one more difficulty to go. The difficulty 100. And that will be coming up in a couple minutes.
Well, I guess just a split second for you guys, because editing magic, but yeah, you know what I mean. Alrighty, guys. It is here at last. The difficulty you have all been waiting for. Difficulty 100. Attack and defend. Now, before we go in this, as I've been saying throughout the entirety of this first official part, I am using yet another mech lab, yet another weapon, yet another weapon clan, as has been prominent in some of the builds I've been using here. So your mileage may vary. You will not have to deal with all of these scary loadouts we will be facing here. You will not have an atlas with a thumper artillery and a freaking arrow four launcher. But you will still have obviously the scary assault mech builds. And uh, yeah, it's time to bring out the Steiner Scout Lance here for a spin. And over here in my mech, we have double thumper, double AC2, and double ER large laser with a double XL400 engine, a double XL gyro to make sure it all fits, and some engine double heat sinks to try to keep the thing cool. It's probably going to run hot this mission though. We have the Hero King Crab here with Hague 20 Goss, Dual Hague 20 Goss, Clan Hague 20 Goss, and a XL335 engine, and some double heat sinks. We have an Awesome with an XL290, a lot of six snub nose PPCs, a lot of snub nose PPCs in that thing. And the Hero Atlas with a UA Clan, Ultra Auto Cannon 20, a Clan streak SRM6 and a bunch of clan heavy medium lasers with an XL400 build engine double heat sinks of course to keep everything cool and all that stuff a lot of XL here going on but uh, the time to kill is the time to kill is a lot different to Mech Warrior Online and all that stuff so I've been making a lot of References to Mech Warrior Online as well, but uh, let's not worry too much about this and let's see if we can even do this. Now, I'll probably be playing this super defensively. I'll probably let a couple waves of allied strike teams go through to try to soften up the enemy defenders. And we have another duel thing going on. We're getting a lot of these dual base sh shenanigans going on. So yeah, you can even see there, that's like 30 heat right there. But at least the dissipation is alright. Looks like we have a Princess Champion Highlander dude hanging out. Got a battle master. Is that a medium pulse leader? It is a medium pulse leader battle master. Yeah, the idea here is to definitely uh, chill out for a bit. Let the uh, strike teams go through with their attacks. And then we will follow up. later on. We are going to play this slow, we are going to play this defensively, this is going to be a slow mission, especially with the assault mechs we got going on right now. Uh, let's hope our patience is well placed. There are going to be plenty of fortress turns and stuff to deal with here. All of that is going to be definitely Interesting as we progress through the mission. Not want to take any unnecessary risks. Is the hostile champion out there? Maybe I can snipe him with the thumper. Because these thumpers are, well, they're thumpers, right? They do incredible range damage. 
Snub nose PPC awesome and just wants blood. Another dual base setup. I was kind of hoping this would just be a one base setup, not gonna lie. Would have made our lives a little easier. I wonder, can I just snipe this motherfucker from here? Ha! I can. Get some early damage in on the enemy base. Eh. Wonder if I could snipe the uh Ooh, that's an Atlas. Not my friends is an Atlas, but I have dual thumpers and I ain't afraid to use them. If I could snipe out these uh turrets from here, that'd be pretty nice. We're actually gonna move in and assist our, uh, our guys here. Assist the strike teams a little bit. There. Oh boy. Yeah, a rumble of the assault mechs in here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, shit. Shit, I don't have... Ah! Don't have any means of attacking these freaking aircraft. At least not at the moment. Alright, my AI's allies seem to be at least semi-competent today. Not an XL build on that crab there. Our awesome is getting peppered. My kill is about to explode. Your kill, excuse me. Ow, that hurt. Ah, she just lost the side tour, so she just got, yep. You know that, or she just got CT'd because her shit's exploding, but we just lost a mech either way. I don't have to worry about ammo too much because we can't just go to the base and restock. But we are down a mech regardless. This is a toasty build. Ah, now the patrol's activating. That's not what we need right now. Those thumpers are hot! Nice kickflip, bro. Definitely not gonna use any thumper ammo for a little tiny vehicle here. What I do want to consider is going back for repairs, because I'm already all yellow all over. Hey guys, get back to the base. Back to the base, hold your fire for now. I'll just take pot shots from here and then we'll uh, repair a little bit. Don't want anybody else getting knocked out here. That guy's a stick, he's gonna be eliminated by the remainder of the allies. Let's see if I can take some pot shots here at the uh, 
Because if I can take the fortress turrets out now, that'll help us immensely in the long run. Looks like that's a whiff. Black Knight out there. New target crashed. Target acquired. I'm being shot at now. Never thought I'd get a fucking annihilator to walk this fast in reverse before. Independent pirates are now involved in the battle. Hopefully they can keep the enemies distracted. That guy's heading right for the base. Alright, go ahead and just open fire again. This guy's gonna get shredded by our fortress turrets here. I was about to say, I guess I should tell my people to, you know... I should tell my people to not just stand around like a bunch of ninnies and actually fight back again. And let me go ahead and restock here. I'm trying to play defensively, but I also, you know, want to actually, you know, go out and fight. One point or another. I don't know, I think I'll save our stuff until one of those guys gets like in the red territory. And it looks like all those pirates just uh, held up our strike team, which is a shame, but it can happen. That is a shame, but it does happen. Still trying to take pot shots at uh at the turns here. I'm kind of abusing the uh kinda infinite range of the auto cannons here. And you know, you can use this with any auto cannons, really. You don't need uh, thumpers or anything like that. It certainly helps because the uh, thumpers have their uh, insane range and stuff. It'd be better if I had thumper artillery, but I don't have that luxury. The Annihilator was unable to field such intense weaponry. I wonder if I can use the AC2s on the guys. I forget I also have these available. Yeah, <laughs> they're all looking at me. They want to fire back, but they can't. You can see they're all facing my direction. I'm actually going to a uh, first person for this, or cockpit view, or whatever. Now, these things are excruciatingly tanky, so they will take many, many shots. But if you have auto cannons, you can just abuse the uh, abuse the auto cannon uh, 
length here to take it out. Another thing worth mentioning is that Coyote's mission. Oh god, we have enemies coming in. Eek. Moving in behind you, Commander. Ow. Ow, ow. Yep. Yep. Coyote has met. Oh my Jesus Christ, that's not what we need right now. Kyle mentioned that it is better to play this, these missions co-op, right? I guess it's meant to be played in co-op, but not everybody has that luxury, me included. I definitely do not have the ow, ow luxury of playing this co-op. Mainly because of my schedule. Makes it so I can't really do much of anything anymore. Which is why I'm not doing these guides co-op. Oh my god, we're gonna get shredded by these guys. Shit. Destroyed. I wish these AC2s did more damage to these aircraft. Grasshopper. That was not the melee button. This is not looking good for us. Armor, critical level. Lost the component. Yeah, this is not looking good at all. That was a really shitty roll with that fucking, uh... VTOL Swarm. If we didn't get that VTOL Swarm, we'd be a lot better off right now. Yep, we just lost another person. Shit. Going crit. <laughs> now I'm about to lose a weapon system. Fire the thumpers right now. Ah, that went right past his freaking armpit. Right past his armpit again. Ah, that was too much heat. about to go. And now we kind of need to fall back. Definitely. We haven't done any amount of work to the secondary base. I'm really not liking our chances here. If this was an actual campaign or career mode, this would be a pretty hefty repair bill and I probably would have aborted already. But for the sake of the guide, we were going to try to see it through.
the waypoint, awaiting orders. All right, looks like they are going to that base, actually. Oh no, they're going to that one. Okay, so I do want to keep peppering this one as much as I can. I knit this one. All right, so that's a majority of the turns over there dealt with. Then we can take out those satellites from here. one of them. That's another one down. We make a move on that base now. Do we make a move on this base now that the turrets are gone? I think we do. As we just continue to pepper it from here. Didn't hit? That's a shame. And that just hit the hill. Can definitely bombard it from here. some of this stuff from here. Ow! An ERPPC and a flea. Interesting choice. I don't know what to call you stupid or brave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, little one. I'm so Oh, there's still a fucking Ravager turn here. Get out of here! Uh oh. I just shut down right in front of him. He's not shooting me though, which is surprising. Ow, there he goes. Die, please. Die, please. Die, please. Thank you. Die. Well, if I can't crab him in there, I probably do not exactly want to, uh... Just punch my king crab in the face. What the fuck, man? Get out of here. Alright, let's make this quick here. Be 
Yeah, these thumpers are great for taking out buildings. But you can also use other single shot auto cannons that are also just as good in the base game if you're not running yet another mech lab. As it says in the uh, vanilla game, that single shot auto cannons are great for devastating buildings, as they are. The thumper and the thumper, the sniper, and the long tom just kind of, you know, ramp that up to 11 a little bit. God, imagine if they had this in Mech Warrior Online. Because this is, because yet another Mech Lab is supposed to bring the Mech Warrior Online. Mech variants and Mech Lab 2, Mech Warrior 5. Alright. So imagine if they had fucking thumpers and shit in there. Oh, that'd be something. Alright, we do have the secondary enemy base, which we could probably help out our allies and snipe out the, uh, fortress turns like we did on this one and if you're playing this in co-op which is apparently recommended by coyote which not everybody has the availability to you can also have like a light mech scout and then have a learn boat pumble the frack out of the uh, out of the fortress turns as well that's also a viable strategy but I can't show that off Again, because of the uh, limited availability of my schedule and all that. I also wouldn't be playing with yet another mech lab if I was. Let's go ahead and help our allies out. There is an assault mech I see on our ass. Ow. Oh, hello, Princess Champion Nightstar. So you got ow ow okay that's a pretty mean night star that that's a mean night star i forgot to put my dude off of this Eek. ow ow please attack him oh we're so close i don't want to restart this mission Help! Oh my god, these knights are so tanky! Thankfully, so am I in the Atlas. We are getting alarm support now, so that's nice. Ammo low, Ammo low. we're definitely gonna. Oh my god, my CT, no! Risking it. All right, good. Okay, that night stars doing a bright glance. Got to love it when they do that. Okay, that was a rough fight. That night star was mean. Definitely need to go get repairs now. I can't continue sniping at the base. Not risking something else. Crawling up our ass and obliterating us. By the way, what level are these guys? These are Princess Champions, so this is the last of our reinforcements. Well, I think the last two waves are Princess Champions, so we could still get another one.
using up the last repair bay here. So just need one final push. Sadly, I don't have an extra thing for that guy. Hey, ooh, that's a also a mean-looking night star there. Don't know what those allies are doing. Don't know why they're not attacking. But oh well. Has been about 30 minutes. Enemy still probably has one or two strike teams up, up their sleeves. If we see anything out here, we might just fall back to the base. Uh, pretty much all I want to do is more sniping with the uh, thumpers and the ACs. That's all I want to do here. Yeah, and I think we're not going to get any more friendly strike teams to help. God, just looking down at my uh, nose there is not great. I see an enemy out there. If he isn't engaged, I ain't about to uh, poke the bear here. I think that's either a Cyclops or a Black Knight. I also see a King Crab or another Night Star in the distance. No, 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 no! You just fucking poke the bear, great! Is in fact a black knight. No, fall back, 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 you fucking idiot. Riding that heat scale like a boss, as always. Who wants some freshly fried annihilator? Okay, nope, nope, we're not fighting that. We're not fighting that on our own. We're not fighting that on our own. We're not fighting that on our own. We need our allies for that. Let's get the hell out of here. Hey, y'all want to actually come over here and help? We could use that, like, you know, quad, what is it, quad frickin' autocannon 5? Yeah, ultra autocannon 5, even. We need to fall the hell back to our allies. Another Atlas. Alright, we'll let our allies take aggro. This 
Looks like he's got an AMS too. I won't tell my uh, my guy to uh, open fire until uh, until this guy takes some aggro here for us. That's so it looks like he's gonna take the high ground. It's probably just this pathing, but still, good choice. Might also wait for the Atlas to catch up as well. Alright, he is opening fire. I'm gonna go ahead and take out that lighter thing there. I'm gonna go ahead and take out these vehicles. And screw it, we're gonna tell our uh, person to open fire here. Alright, there goes that guy. Next. Crab. Take out that helicopter so it doesn't harass us. Go for our legs on the crab. We're gonna shut ourselves down again. There is some sort of uh, king crab or another night star out here. It's king crab. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Everyone see fire. He's fire and fall back. Him come to us. Oh my god, that's two king grabs. Alright, we're gonna be under running their LRMs now, so. Hi there! Ow. Ow. Can we go for headshots? I think we just fucking headshotted that guy, nice. Alright. Let us have our AI take point again. Well, first he's gotta, you know... What are you doing? Get your ass back here. What are you doing? Do not charge the base by yourself, you dumbass. I really hope you're actually going to attack the base, by the way. Not just stare at the corpses and go back to the allied aid base. I am going to take pot shots at that stuff while we're here. Oh god, what the hell is that? That's another atlas. That's wonderful. What was that? That was an explosion in my face, whatever the hell that was. There we go, good job there. They still have fortress turrets over there. Oops, sorry, Nightstar. Ow. Alright, there goes that guy. Gonna take a pot shot at the building here. 
All right, now we just go all in. Screw it. Where's that motherfucker out there? Ow. Do you have an ammo explosion occurring over there on that Warhammer? And he's a stick, alright. Oh boy, there's another heavy mech out there! And at least we got the uh, AI allies here. Oh my god. Oh boy, that's a whole lot of the lance. We gotta make this quick. We gotta get the fuck out of here. If I make this quick, let's continue to shut ourselves down. Oh my god, oh my god, turn back on, turn back on. Ah! Oh no. Ow. The building is cover. Almost out of here. Friendly AI is brawling with the uh, enemies. Now, gonna try to continue using the uh, base itself as cover here. We're so close. Just gonna break down some sections of wall. Where's the evac? We're out of here, boys! <laughs> That's serpentine. This boat the frick out of Dodge. First try, baby! Hell yeah! Let's let's get the frick out of Dodge now. If this was a campaign or a career mode, that would have been a hell of a repair bill, right? We lost two mechs, and our last two got extremely damaged in our internals, right? Unless you're like way late in the game and you have like more money than you know what to do with, then uh, yeah. You'll, this will cost you an arm and a leg here, especially if you're playing yet another back lab. But, that was attack and defend, difficulty 100. And that was the last attack and defend we had to do. Because we did a good few. And I guess another thing I didn't think about is if you had artillery strikes, you could probably pull something off with that, with like a light mech or something, drop an artillery strike at the enemy base and get the fuck out of dodge before they attack you too much. I probably won't be doing a, a mission on that because I want to get this first video out, 
Speaking of, I'm terribly sorry for uh, taking so long. It's been like three weeks, probably more than that, since I uploaded the uh, introductory video. Part of that, is, uh, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have started with Attack and Defend, which is the most difficult mission type in the entire pack. Uh, spoiler alert. But uh, another part of that is obviously my restricted schedule, and I'm sure you guys know and understand that by now. But now that we have Attack and Defend out of the way, things will probably pick up a lot more as we go on to more of the easier, still kind of complicated, but a lot easier mission types. And as always, Coyote can probably uh, confirm or deny a few of the finer details in the comments if that occurs. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for being patient with this. I know it's been a slow burn with uh, development of this series, but I just want to make sure I can be as good as possible here, you know? And I'm pretty... S and I have to admit, if we would have lost that mission at the last minute there, then I probably would have still kept it in. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys. In the next one, we'll probably be doing, I want to say, either Recon or Patrol next. So, uh, if you guys have any preferences, let me know. But uh, until then, I'll see you guys next time I'm out.